I mean, it's, it's definitely been a very emotional past couple of days, not only for myself, but everyone. Um, first and foremost, uh, I got to give a lot of credit to our players. Our players, um, it's, it's been a hard time. Um, everyone uh, showed in a lot, but uh, the communication that we have in, uh, has been amazing. Um, I think what everyone saw in the past couple of days was, you know, guys just needing to 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 reset, refocus, and that's what we did. Um, I mean, I think it's 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 great. I think we all needed a pause. Um, I think emotionally, um, physically, uh, mentally, and obviously based on uh, recent police killings and shooting, um, it allowed us uh, to use our platform. You know, the, the shootings that continue to happen. Uh, it creates a lot of unrest, a whole lot of unrest uh, for us to have a predominantly African-American league to see, um, you know, our black brothers being shot and killed on a daily basis. You know, it's, it, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to us. And so everyone expects us to go out and play. I get it. But we needed some time, all of us. We needed some time to, to refocus and, and understand um, you know, that, that we can do that. We're human at the end of the day. A lot of times people pass a lot of judgment about what we should do or what we shouldn't do. But guys, I give our guys a lot of credit because they've been doing a hell of a job, a hell of a job down here performing and speaking on the different social injustice that's going on day in and day out while trying to be uh, a great athlete, while trying to be a great husband, while trying to be a great father. I watched the video. Um, it's heartbreaking. You know, it's... Uh, it's something that is you can't explain, and it's something that is just not right. Um, I mean, me growing up in inner city Los Angeles and being able to see uh, the different uh, police brutality that happen and on everyday life, and for me to be able to see that, uh, number one, is heartbreaking. And in my mind, uh, I want to find a way to help and, and make change. And and the good thing about our league and our players, uh, we all felt the same way. Um, about the situation for us to be able to take a pause and a break to be able to now come to a few things that we think is important um, for now and and obviously there's so many other things going on in our society that we can we can tackle but I think initially tackling our voting and finding ways to be able to use um, our teams and our arenas to be able to understand why voting is important um, and I think that's a trickle down effect um, to our police reform to be able to Make sure our cops and the cops around the world, um, number one, get penalized and their consequences for uh, their actions, um, especially when they're, um, you know, unjust. These things is voting. Voting is something that uh, everyone in the room is very passionate about. We got a chance to discuss. We got a chance to talk to the different governors and tell them how, you know, we want uh, all of the NBA arenas to be polling sites. Right. And uh, another thing that guys spoke about is while we're out there playing. During these commercials, we would like to see um, advertisement for voting, right? We understand how strong our voice is, how powerful our voice is, and you know, ultimately we decided uh, if we go away from this stage, we, we don't necessarily have that same platform. So we stood in solidarity. You know, we're going to continue to, to, to play, but we're also going to continue to make sure that our voices are heard. Other thing, too, is not just make sure our voices are heard. We're about action. We're about action, and that's what our meeting was about. It was about the real action. You know, God said, you know, we've been saying this, we've been saying that, but what's the action? And so uh, in our meetings, we had a big meeting with all the players, and then we had a smaller meeting where two players from every team came. And I think that was very informational, and we got a chance to talk to the different governors, and we told them the action that we wanted to see in place. We've heard because once the NBA stopped, everything else stopped. And that shows the, the platform, that shows the power of us as players and uh our voices were heard. And I don't know how close we were to stopping and if that was an opportunity, but I do know one thing, we stopped for a reason. Um, we needed a pause, we needed a break. Hi, Russell. Uh, I just wanted to know if you could detail at all your conversation with Michael Jordan uh, and how he kind of helped the, the players and, and the owners kind of get on a path to uh, some social justice initiatives. You know, MJ has um, always been huge in finding ways to give back to not just communities, but the African-American community and me being uh, with Jordan Brand and, and him being on the side of, of ownership and being a black owner is huge. Uh, and during the meeting and during the conversation between myself, the players and, and owners, he was huge and huge in 
and making sure that whatever it is that we wanted to do together, uh, we make sure we get it done. We've had previous conversations with with ownership and, um, and players and some of the things that we wanted weren't able to get done. But I think MJ was real adamant about making sure that you know we we get things done and, and get them right done. Now, our league is huge, and I think for the young guys in our league to get a chance to see how guys are really coming together and speak and and see real change, real action, because guys are tired. Like, I mean, tired. And I'm saying, when I say tired, we're not physically tired. We're just tired of seeing the same thing over and over again, right? Um, I was blessed and fortunate enough to, to talk to Jacob, um, to, to talk to Jacob Blake's father. And it's emotional. It's emotional, especially when you're a black man and you know that it was hurt. We all hurt. We, we, we all tired of just seeing the same thing over and over again. And everybody just expect us to be okay just because we get paid great money. You know, we're human, we have really real feelings and I'm glad that we got a chance to get in a room together to talk with one another and not just cross paths and say, good luck in your game today. So, you know, we're, we're human just like anybody else. We don't always do everything right, but I tell you for me, it's been really tough. It's been really tough just for the simple fact that when things like this happen, I like to talk to my kids about it. You know, I'm a long way from my kids. I can't explain to them why this video is going all over the internet. I have an 11 year old black son, black son who was witnessing, witnessing this stuff day in and day out. Um, I've been around people, my friends, I have family and friends that have been subject to, to police brutality. I have people that I know friends that are cops as well. So I, I've been privy to, to, to it all, man. And since I was young and my parents is always taught me to find ways to be able to use your platform to be able to not, not one, help your community, but actually be involved and be upfront and where you, you, you are actually in the field and finding ways to be able to help uh, the community. And this year has been crazy. Um, we have the election coming up, a pandemic going on where people are losing their lives and families are struggling. Um, it's, it's so much going on at one time, man. I think it's a time where we actually take a break and actually think about the things we need to do and do them. Uh, I think about daily. Uh, and even before I came in a bubble, since I've been in the NBA and since I've grown up in, in the city of, of Los Angeles and finding ways to, to get back, I've always thought about legacy and figuring out a way to be able to, what does it mean? What does your legacy mean? Is it just about basketball? And I, I don't think mine is about basketball. I believe mine is about giving back and not just giving back, but impacting um, and inspiring and finding ways to be able to do what's right. Our black communities has been hurting for many, many, many years. I feel like I have the platform. I have the ability to be able to reach certain people. I feel like it's my duty to make sure that our, our black people are heard, our black men are heard, our communities, our underserved communities are heard, and I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure that happens and, and making sure that I'm a part of, of history um, in a positive way and making sure that whether it's five years, 10 years, 20 years down the line, that I can look back and say, I was a part of that and I put my best foot forward. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to play, but I'm also, I'm more excited that we're playing uh, for a, a cause, playing that we're in agreement to to be able to make sure that's action. We play and we have our names on the back of our jerseys and we have our messaging on the back of our jerseys. And that means something. And it's not just something that we just put on there for fun or for kicks and giggles, but it actually means something. It's actually something that I personally take action and take responsible, responsibility in being a, an African-American athlete, um, a black man in this society, having a son of my, my own and, and having other kids that look up to me from my neighborhood around the world. is something that that's, that's what I'm most excited about uh, moving forward. And obviously basketball is our platform. It's something that I love and embrace to do, but if there wasn't any agreement or there's no action moving towards some of the things that we, we talked about as players and, and me personally, I wouldn't be and playing. We're just trying. And once again, I want to go back and just tell our players like, great job. Great job. Keep doing what you're doing and we're going to continue to make change with action.